right, SEMA 2019, turn your attention to the Motor Trend stage. Give it up for the one and only Chris Jacobs. Woohoo! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us here at the Motor Trend stage. And I've got some very special guests up on the stage with me right now. First of all, Alex Welling, Global President and General Manager of Motor Trend. The head of programming, Mike Suggett. And the editor-in-chief of Motor Trend Magazine, Ed Lowe. Guys, thank you so much for joining me up here right now. We're at SEMA, which is the mecca of the car world. So very appropriate that Motor Trend has such a huge presence here at the show. Yeah, we, we are, uh, we're thrilled, obviously, to have this stage right now and reporting it in live. We have a booth inside if you're able to go inside there as well. And we've, you know, this has been a big year for us. Uh, over the last year, I think you've seen, we have the Motor Trend Network that is uh, across over 75 million homes. We have all of our publications, but then our direct-to-consumer business, our, our websites that reach 11 million people every single month. Um, and so much more programming. I think if you go to the service right now, we think I have uh, about 7,000 episodes of all your favorite programs from Discovery Motor Mondays and from Motor Trend and, and, and just thousands and thousands of hours. So it's going to be an exciting year for us. And, and what's really cool about where we are right now, just last night we had an event in this space where we not only had several reveals of your favorite Discovery Motor Monday shows, but a live on Discovery overhaul and reveal. And yes, if you've been living under a rock and, and you don't know, overhauling is back. And I want to ask you guys who made the brilliant decision <laughs> to bring overhauling back. I was not the only person involved. You and I were having dinner uh, exactly a year ago here at SEMA. And we were, we were baffled by the fact that overhauling wasn't on the, on the air. It had been five years, and the audiences were clamoring for it. And we said, how do we get out of our own way and do what's right for the fans? How do we do what's right for customers? And how do we do it in a fresh way that's never been done before, but that feels evocative of that moment? Because that show is the epitome of what we want to be, right? For us, it's all about being authentic, that emotional tug, that authenticity that comes with building those cars and the people behind those cars. So the cars are nothing, nothing without the people. And so you and I talked about it, but then ultimately Mike, who is our head of programming, was able to run with the idea and do something really special. Yeah, I think the great thing that you're seeing with the subscription service especially is we are able to bring back some of these beloved titles like Overhaul and, and do them, as Alex said, in a new digital way. So you know the show is going to be all killer, no filler, right? It's going to be get right to the good parts. And Chris, I know you're already experiencing some of that. Uh, but I think the other thing we can do is is take some of our franchise series and, and create spinoffs or additional content. So you're going to see with our Bitch and Ride series, an all new series, Bitch and Boot Camp, where people are competing to be to join Dave Kindig's shop in Utah as a competition series. So that'll be on the service in January. And we're really excited about, you know, the, you know, you're going to see an announcement with Mike Finnegan uh, later in two days uh, here at SEMA where he's going to be talking about a new project coming exclusively to the subscription service. So we're really excited not only about our Halo shows like Overhaul and or Roadkill or Bitch and Rides, but what we can do as kind of spinoffs or digital only exclusives with the same kind of IP. And what's also great about the streaming service is that it's one-stop shop. You've got all of your favorite programming right there at your fingertips. If you want to familiarize yourself with any or all of the old episodes of Overhauling, well, it's right there. You download the Motor Trend app, and you can browse the library at your leisure. Yeah, I, I think that with all the services that are out there right now, and you have Netflix and Hulu and a number of like very big services that have lots and lots of content, we really believe that there's a place for the automotive space, for the fans, right? Not just people dabbling in a story here and there, people who spend every single day thinking about you, the fans, the families, people who restore cars, buy cars, race cars, wreck cars, love people who love cars and, and off-roading and trucks. And so, you know, we are devoted to that every single day. And we have people all across the world doing that. And I think, I think for me, what's so exciting is that we're in a category of one. If you love automotive, 
this is the place. You can watch every single episode, every single one of the shows that you see here, and every show that you've seen before, and now new shows, including the full library of Top Gear and Top Gear America, and about 15 brand new freshman shows that I know that, uh, that Mike can and can't talk about. Yeah, I think we're gonna have the biggest slate of programming next year in 2020 that we've ever had, over 50 shows total, over 20, which will be freshman or all new series. So there's gonna be a lot of new car content reaching all across different genres, genres that you know us well for, like our build shows and our, you know, our, our adventure shows. But we would love to tell more inspirational and uplifting stories too. I think Overhauling is a great example, right? Cars can change the world, cars can change an individual's life. So we want to tell more stories in that vein, and we think that will that will actually attract not just car fans, but I think just people in general who want to feel good about you know the future and where we're headed. And we know cars can be a way to do that. So we're excited about bringing again over 50 new shows or over 50 shows with premieres in 2020. You know, we're coming up on the one-year anniversary since the network was rebranded as Motor Trend. Ed, you as editor in chief of Motor Trend Magazine, which is where the name and brand started. How was that transition from your side? Well, it's been great. I mean, we're basically a cross-platform. We no longer really talk about it as just Motor Trend Magazine, even though it's been our heritage for the last 70 years. Motor Trend turned 70 this year. Uh, we started back in 1949. Um, but, you know, since the early 2000s, we've had a website. Uh, we were one of the first operations to get on board uh, YouTube, thanks to Mike. And team, we were, you know, we grew the YouTube space into, you know, six, six point six million subscribers, and then decided we got to take this into a direct consumer play. I've been really bullish on social. I helped launch all of Motor Trend's big social handles from Twitter to Instagram, you know. So adding the, you know, the Motor Trend channel on linear broadcast, along with everything else we do from the app to our website to the magazine. I mean, we basically touch every part of the market for anybody who loves cars, anyone who's into cars. I mean, we know from our audience uh, surveys, from the, you know, the research we've done, that people know the brand from the magazine, their dad got it, it was in their doctor's waiting room, they've known it for years, uh, or they've seen Motor Trend, Car of the Year, Truck of the Year, a commercial on TV after one of the sporting events. So we know there's a lot of people who, who get the brand, we just, want to, we just need to make sure we're, we're serving them the, the right content on the right platform. Well, let's define our terms a bit here. Alex, who is your target audience for the Motor Trend app? Who is the Motor Trend fan? So we've often used this term enthusiast, the, uh, the auto enthusiast, but it's just such a limiting word. We have those core, you know, the core hobbyists and the core what we call carnivores, right? The people who love this content and who are parts of families who have loved this content. And so we are going wider and deeper. What you see is with overhauling, with bitch and rides, with all these programs where we have additional content, we're going deeper with our fan base, but we're also going wider, right? So we have all kinds of new programs that are addressing everyone out there, not just the men in their 40s who are looking at um, particular builds or restorations, there's a core audience of people who love cars and they look very different all across the globe. And so if we're going to be the ultimate destination for those who love cars and the people around them, we have to appeal to everyone. And that's why we have 15 new programs. And yet with the programs that we have and all the programs that you see up here, we're gonna go deeper and super serve those. So yeah, um, I think, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Alex, but, but Mike, Alex just mentioned the slate of new shows coming for 2020. Obviously, moving into the digital space from linear, linear has a certain amount of hours. Digital is unlimited. What's your thought process? How do you make the decisions on what content to develop for Motor Trend? Well, as Alex said, you know, we have core shows that really drive the business, right? Whether it's on the linear channel or the subscription service, you know them, you love them, Texas Metal, Bitch and Rides, Roadkill, Dirt Every Day. And so those fans crave the more from them and from those creators. And so that's what we're gonna look at is, okay, what is, what's the next show within the world of Roadkill look like, right? We, we, we've spun it off now to Roadkill Garage. We have Roadkill's Junkyard Goal with Steve Magnante, who you know very well. Know and love. You know and love. He is an encyclopedic mind about how it's in the, when he's in those junkyards. And so we're looking at Mike Finnegan out in Atlanta 
and he's you know not with you know twiddling his thumbs but we could do more with mike and we and we will be doing more with mike and we're very excited to announce a show coming in, in two days we'll, we'll have more details on that so i think that's that's one exercise which is who what do the fans want more of how can we figure out a way to do that but then to alex's point there's so much more in the automotive space and i think top gear is is a clear indicator of a series that works for both the hardcore car fan and somebody who just loves great storytelling or somebody who loves to see three people who have an amazing chemistry together and who, who always escalate things and, and give each other you know grief and, and, and I think people can relate to that and not necessarily have to know the ins and outs of you know a V8 muscle car. And I think that's that's how we're looking at programming going forward, which is what shows can we go deeper with and then what what are there other pockets of audience that we can go reach if we work with the right talent or if we partner with the right creators. One of the things we want to do is go out and say, hey, you, as a documentarian, you're telling amazing documentaries in the sports world. What could you do for us if we set you loose with motorsport, right? Like, who are the people out there doing great work that we just say, hey, ply your craft and, and go tell stories in our world of automotive. And we think there's some amazing partnerships and collaborations we'll be able to announce in the coming weeks in that space. Yeah, you mentioned Top Gear, which is obviously a foundational show in the automotive industry. Anybody who is a car lover instantly knows what you're talking about when you say Top Gear. And one of the recent additions to the Motor Trend Library was, of course, the Top Gear Ultimate Collection. So if you want to see anything Top Gear related, once again, the Motor Trend app is your one-stop shop for that. That's right, and, and I, I want to bring Ed on this too because he's been so crucial to making Motor Trend a daily habit. That's what we want. We want you inside our apps, our websites. We do 40 events per year. Uh, we have our linear network. We want you to interact with us every single day and give you that credibility, and Ed can speak to that as well as what Top Gear brings to the table. What I would just add on Top Gear is we, there is no place on the planet where you will find the complete collection except for Motor Trend. We will have every single episode. And in addition to that, we will be, as you know, next year launching Top Gear America. And that's where, where it all began, right? There was Top Gear UK, the original show, but so much of our history, our 70 year anniversary of Motor Trend started right here in the United States. And that's why that show is so important for us as we tell stories about people and journeys and the role that automotive is playing in mobility, I think that, that Top Gear America is going to be just a total hoot. And I cannot wait uh, for us to announce in the coming weeks who the new hosts will be. I mean, from, from where I sit, the, the best part about everything we're doing is that we are really hitting, uh, as Alex mentioned, we're going broader and we're going deeper. Like, we have shows that work on multiple levels, Roadkill, Top Gear, these are legitimately entertaining. Top Gear is really funny. You don't have to know anything about cars to enjoy it. Uh, but then we can take you all the way in. We have the build shows. We have everything you want. If you're shopping for a car, you go to motortrend.com. We can tell you all the latest on the, you know, the new cars that have come out. Uh, we do events. We cover news. That's part of the daily habit Alex mentioned. You know, Alex and I were just in uh, Austin, Texas for the F1 race covering that. A week ago, two weeks ago, I was in Tokyo for the Tokyo Motor Show. You know, if you are interested in cars from any perspective, if you are, you know, on the editorial side, we talk a lot about uh, catering um, to the, the alpha dog in the, in the car group, the guy who everybody in his tribe, they go to for car information. We feed that guy's brain. He goes and, and he's the big man because he knows all the car stuff because, you know, we gave him the exclusive access all the way to people who just want to go home at night shut off their brain and be entertained and enjoy cool car content. We cover it from basically A to Z. Yeah, I was gonna say, Roadkill might be the epitome of that exercise. You talk, you talk about a show that started as a YouTube series with two guys. We barely shot the first episode. We thought this thing is gonna fail. And it turned out failure was part of the appeal of the show. And we've leaned into that. And now, you know, we have Roadkill Nights in Detroit, outside Detroit every year, where tens of thousands of people come out to ride and meet with Mike and David, you know, we've spun it off into the series we were talking about, and people are proud to wear the hats and the t-shirts. It's a community. And I think the one thing about car fans, if you look around SEMA, it is a big community. You might have your own pockets where you, you know, the muscle car guys and the truck guys might not hang, hang out all the time, but we all respect the passion we bring to the space. And I think Motor Trend, yeah, Motor Trend is about, you know, fueling that passion. And I think if there's a program out there that we think can reach a new part of that fan base that's passionate about their space, we're gonna program for that person too. And speaking of roadkill nights, let's not forget drag racing on the iconic Woodward Avenue. 
which I have done. That was an unbelievable bucket list experience for me. Alex, I want to close with one more question for you. It's been a whirlwind and a meteoric rise for you as global president and general manager of Motor Trend since you took the reins. What's the greatest part about having that role at Motor Trend? It, you know, when, I, when they came to me with the role, I was, uh, I was really taken because there are just so few iconic brands in the world. The fact that this September we celebrated 70 years, like it means something to have that longevity, that, that, that how far we've come. And so for me, I think it's twofold. It's a, it's a privilege and honor to work with the team that I do, uh, the two gentlemen up here, but the team spans all across the globe, hundreds of people who absolutely love this space, who care deeply about it and want to tell the stories with that credibility. To me, like that's the best thing. If you want to be in the automotive space, you want to work at Motor Trend, reach out to us. Tell us. We're hiring because we want to tell those stories. And the second piece I would say, and this has a lot to do with it as well, is, you know, there is no one who's going to be able to bring that level of authenticity. No one's going to be able to give that level of credibility and have people who will make sure that we have your back, right? We're not doing it as a gimmick. We're here because we deeply care. We have this heritage, and we need your help to tell those stories. So while the world is awash of many, many kind of entertainment systems and availability around different content, if you love the automotive space, to me, being a part of that is a really special thing. Well said, sir. Ed Lowe, Mike Suggett, Alex Wellen, thank you guys for joining me. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks, guys. Thank you.